Number 5. Since 1970s lot of progress have been made in SAM, surface to air missile, technology. SAMs play a very important role of anti-area slash access denial. Any area defended by a modern SAM, like S-400, is very hard to penetrate, even by the most technologically advanced aircrafts. These systems are also economically more viable, as a missile costing $0.2 to $0.8 million can take out a $30 to $50 million plane. To defeat these systems, a new category of air-to-land missile have been developed, they are designated as Anti-Radiation Missile ARM. They are commonly carried by special aircrafts in sea role. Currently only a handful of countries, like the US, Germany, Russia and Brazil have built this kind of missile. Number 4. All SAM need radars for targeting. ARM are designed to pick up signals or radiations from radars and communication facilities, and then target them leading to their eventual destruction. The primary purpose of this type of missile is to degrade adversaries' air defenses in the first period of a conflict, in order to increase the chances of survival for the following waves of strike aircraft. They can also be used to quickly shut down unexpected surface-to-air missile sites during an air raid. Number 3 the Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO, is working on anti-radiation missile and is named as New Generation Anti-Radiation Missile NGARM. It is expected that the maiden flight test will be held by the end of 2016. The Indian Air Force would be inducting this missile within two years, following the completion of all the developmental trails. The missile is of indigenous development, including its seeker. This seeker is placed in the front end of the missile, and picks up various radio frequencies. Number 2 The missile is a single-stage, solid-fueled system, and will be using dual-pulse propulsion system instead of thrust propulsion. This is the first time the RDO is using a dual-pulse propulsion system. The missile will initially coast by firing the first pulse, the second pulse will be initiated, just before interception of the target, that is the terminal phase. The missile has a range of 100 km to 125 km. Number 1 The missile will be mounted on India's frontline air superiority fighter the Sukhoi Su-30 MKI, and the indigenous multi-role fighter, HAL LCA. Currently the Air Force equips its Su-30 MKI fighters with the Russian KH-35 missile and uses the French Martel anti-radiation missile on its Jaguar and Mirage aircrafts. The Air Force is negotiating to buy AGM-88 missiles from the US and plans to induct more than 1,500 in the next five years. It is expected that once the indigenous missile is developed, it will be used in conjugation with the above mentioned missiles. Above the clouds, high in the Himalayas, the old Silk Road climbs through 14,000 feet to the Natula Pass, where two immense nations meet. It's here that India comes face to face with China. Forty years ago, they fought a fierce frontier war. Now, finally, the border is reopening for trade. Symbol of epic change in both countries as they dash for growth and new riches. India and China together will shape much of this century for all of us. But who will be the winners and losers as they race each other to the top of the world? I'm setting off on a journey through China and India to watch the race unfold. First Shanghai and the Chinese sprint from the very start. The airport train pushes through 430 kilometers per hour, 270 miles per hour, for a mere eight-minute journey. Impressive, undoubtedly. Vitally needed, hardly. But this train is a political statement. Be amazed, be very amazed by China's rise. Once China decided it wanted the fastest train in the world, there didn't need to be any public discussion. This isn't a democracy. In a one-party state, what the government wants, the government gets.
The train seems to shout to the world, we're overtaking you all. Arriving in India is a very different story. This doesn't immediately look like a country on a dash for growth. A taxi in Mumbai, the country's commercial capital, gives me far too much time for a close-up view of slums and jams. Most of India's roads are hopelessly inadequate, part of a lousy infrastructure. But what's holding India back? Partly it's the need to persuade people in overcrowded areas like this to move out of the path of modernization. They can't be forced out of the way. It's called democracy. But how does it look to those creating the new wealth? Hi. Nice to meet you. What do you think would suit me? Um, I can do all kinds of shoes. I like these ones. These yeah. are really smart. Mm -hmm. In Shanghai, Billy Wang's handmade shoes tell a powerful tale. Billy took me to his small factory, a tiny but thriving part of China's manufacturing boom. His workers copy from photos their customers' favorite shoes. It's all imitation, not innovation. The business is expanding very fast, like all Chinese manufacturing. And Mr. Wang certainly doesn't question China's system, which helps make him rich. I'm just a shoemaker. I just worry about my shoes. Nothing else matters to me. I just want to make good shoes. How much does your business and your future success depend on China's government? According to the Chinese way of thinking, the political system is decisive. Everything else comes second to this. And that's the message big picture China tells you too. In the new Shanghai, with its soaring temples of capitalism, the fast track to wealth has been produced by a rigid political system, communist in name only now. Shanghai's international port is part of national success built on an unwritten deal. Business stays out of politics, especially when the political system delivers so much. The port director told me he's immensely proud of what's been achieved. This area is for refrigerated containers. Over there, those are for hazardous materials. Most of these are for normal dry goods. This whole port was built in 1990. Every year, we're growing by 25%. More than that, it's largely one-way traffic here. China doesn't buy much overseas, but produces vast quantities of goods for sale. China's achievement is simply staggering. Single-minded, one-party government making clear decisions which mean that China dominates the export world. It's staggering to watch this. Containers coming on and off ships simultaneously, most of them coming into China empty, most of them going out crammed with Chinese exports. This isn't something that should worry just India. It worries economies across the world. A huge trade imbalance. Basically, we have a lot of uh, construction going on right now, just before the monsoons. But in India, young risk takers are not dismayed by China's success. The story of Tarun Tadani in Mumbai is typical. All our, all our designs are basically finalized. Tarun is a man in a hurry to share in India's consumer boom happening now. Tarun, still only 22, cut short studies in America to create this fashion accessories business. And the emphasis here in his design room, unlike China, is on innovation, not imitation. Next door in the workshop, a small team churns out low-cost fashion accessories for eager buyers among India's spreading middle class. Tarun insists India's cheap labor, combined with superior design skills, make a winning formula. We, we never copy directly. We spend so much time, so much, I mean, consistently trying to make new products, you know, new designs, new things out there, finding new trends, you know, just keep developing in new, new styles. So is this an exciting time to doing business in India? It's an exciting time because you can see things happening, you know. India is moving very fast, but it's like, it's like a boat. But if we don't, if we can sail or we can even sink. I can't speak for the future, but 
I can definitely say it is it is definitely bright. It's a, it's a good path, and I think we are we are on the right track. And big picture, India. Well, that stress on skills drives heavy industry too. Here at Mukan Steel, they can't compete with China's bulk bog standard production. Instead, they make only high value specialist steels, meeting Europe's most exacting standards. I'll tell you, life does not get hotter than this. At the heart of a steelworks in India, midsummer, it's almost unbearable. But the Indians are justifiably proud of what they're doing here, not just competing with huge producers like China with a massive output of bulk commodity steel, but here making some of the world's finest high-grade steel, competing with anything that could be produced in other parts of the industrialized world. Most of this steel meets India's enormous demands, but also goes for export. This is an area of heavy industry where India sees opportunities for massive growth over the next 10 or 15 years, and where the Indians are convinced they have a huge edge over China. Outside, away from the intense heat, I hear some fighting talk from the marketing director. India can catch up and then overtake China. And I don't think China can sustain this kind of high growth rate here for next three to five years. Is India While going to India's uh, growth rate for last uh, year was 8.5% GDP, the current year has begun with 9.5% in first two months. And I think as we go along, we see acceleration of the growth rate as all the industry segments are... Gna. And fighting poverty means giving children skills which could lift them to jobs inside India's urban-led boom. An escape route from very low wages working the land. What would you spend it on? As it is, the headmaster sometimes despairs at the risk of perpetual poverty here. Because uh, uneducated parents, uh, they are not sending their children properly to the school. Uh, absent is uh, their uh, children uh, absent is uh, one they are uh, at least continually uh, continuously uh, nearly 10 to 15 days they are absenting by that way you will not understand uh, lessons properly but if they get better educated will that give them a different chance in life than their parents i mean is the future for them better definitely sir. definitely Now look at this, still India, but the contrast could hardly be more extreme. This is the breath-catching campus in Bangalore of Infosys, India's own homegrown software giant, and a major contributor to India's explosive growth. We have a faculty of 180 people who are faculties in computer science. This is possibly the largest computer science faculty anywhere in the world. Mahandas Pai, Infosys director, is showing me a vision of India's future. And the biggest emphasis of all here, no question, it's on teaching. Taking the highest achievers among India's college leavers to even greater heights. They see no limits to the country's future or their own. I want to leave a mark. I'm looking at making a difference somewhere down the line. It's not like everything is already done. So there is there's so much that's yet to be discovered, that's yet to be tapped. So that way, there's, there's a lot of scope to make a difference. Is this an... India accounted for 14% of total weapons imports between 2011 and 2015. India remains the world's largest weapons importer over the five-year period, according to latest report of the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. India is not known to export defense equipments. But in last two years, India under the leadership of PM Modi is trying to change that, with Make in India initiative. The idea is to design and manufacture in India and export it to other countries, which will bring in foreign exchange. Defense Minister Manohar Parika has set a target to raise India's defense exports to $2 billion in the next two years from the current $330 million. In this video, we will look into five products that India is exporting or plans to export over the next few years. Number 5 Okosh is a surface-to-air missile system developed by DRDO with contribution from 61 Indian public and private sector companies. 
It is an all-weather missile, enjoying high immunity against active and passive jamming, and is designed to kill adversaries at an altitude as low as 30 meters, to as high as 18 to 20 kilometers. The best part is that the RDO coordinated work with other agencies, including the users that is the Indian Air Force and Indian Army to produce this system. It has found takers among friendly foreign nations, such as Thailand and Belarus, which have shown and expressed interest in acquiring the missile system. Number 4 MCGS Barracuda built by Garden Reach Shipbuilders and Engineers, Kolkata for National Coast Guard of Mauritius is an example of successful export. India joined the elite club of warship exporters when GRSE delivered it to Mauritius on 20 December 2014. The contract was worth $58.5 million. The Indian government has already cleared export of 13 warships to Mauritius, which will be supplied over the next few years. This include two fast patrol vessels, FPVs, and 11 fast attack crafts. India also has agreed on supplying ships to Vietnam. The sale of at least four patrol vessels comes as part of the $100 million credit line for military equipments extended to Vietnam by India. The patrol vessels will be about 35 meters in length, 10 meters broad. These will have specialized aluminum hull, and will be used to patrol the waters close to the shore. Vietnam needs at least seven more such ships, and GRSE is expected to get the order for the rest of the ships as well. Besides, it is also in the race to export two light frigates, about 3,500 tons each at a total cost of 2,000 crore rupees, to the Philippines. Number 3 The HAL Light Combat Helicopter, LCH, is a multi-role combat helicopter being developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, for use by the Indian Defence Forces. It has now caught the eyes of African countries. According to a PTI report, India is in talks with certain countries in Africa for possible export of the LCH. Japan has also shown keen interest in acquiring the HAL LCH, after it became the first helicopter of its kind, to have landed at an altitude of 16,000 feet from the sea level. No other light combat helicopter has achieved this feat. Number 2 the BrahMos is a ramjet supersonic cruise missile, that can be launched from submarines, ships, aircraft or land. It is considered, to be the most deadly anti-ship missile. It is a joint venture, between the Russian Federation's NPO Machinos Ruainia, and India's Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO, who have together formed BrahMos Aerospace. Talks are an advanced stage with Vietnam for export. Negotiations are also currently underway with Chile, Brazil, South Africa, and Indonesia. Number 1 The HAL Tejas, is a single-seat, single-jet engine, multi-role light fighter designed by the Aeronautical Development Agency, ADA, and Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, HAL, for Indian Air Force. Sources said inquiries by foreign countries came during the Bahrain Air Show in January, the very first time that Tejas flew outside the country. As per the reports Sri Lanka and Egypt, have shown interest in the aircraft. Sri Lanka had recently rejected Pakistan's JF-17 aircraft built with Chinese help, and is now looking into Tejas. Egypt had last year signed a contract for 24 French-made Rafale fighter jets and are interested in some multi-role light fighters. Interestingly, soon after the announcement of Tejas participation in Bahrain, Pakistan had withdrawn its JF-17 aircraft from the show, despite having paid the initial installment which ran into a few million US dollars. China has maintained very high economic growth over the last 20 years, and has become a major economic power. It has spent heavily on military build-up, and modernized its military forces. In recent times, China has been very aggressive in its posturing. South China Sea Dispute China has reclaimed land through artificial methods, and set up airstrip for military use in disputed islands of South China Sea. Brunei 
Malaysia, the Philippines, and Vietnam have claims to these islands, but have been shrugged aside by China. Non-claimants like USA, India, Australia and Japan want the South China Sea to remain as international waters with freedom of navigation, whereas, China want to control this major trade way. Dispute with India In the past two to three years, Chinese troops have frequently strayed inside India's side of LOC. After a number of frequent incursions in Ladakh area, Chinese People's Liberation Army troops have been spotted at forward posts along the LOC on the Pakistani side of Kashmir. Also, they have built up massive infrastructure along the LOC, which can be very useful for troop movement in case of a conflict with India. Here is list of steps taken by USA. 1. The US sailed a guided missile destroyer within 12 nautical miles of the artificial islands, the first in a series of actions planned to assert freedom of navigation in the region. 2. The Pentagon has designed a new strategy for the 21st century, called Air-Sea Battle, a concept that combines air and naval forces to punch through the increasingly formidable defenses of nations like China. 3. An important part of air-sea battle calls for the military to operate from small, bare-bones bases in the Pacific, so that its forces can disperse to in case their main bases are targeted by Chinese ballistic missiles. The idea is to have enough US bases and air force capabilities peppered throughout the region, so that China would be too surrounded to safely attack in the event of a conflict. 4. One specific example is Saipan. The USA Air Force will expand the existing Saipan International Airport, to accommodate cargo, fighter, and tanker aircraft, along with up to 700 support personnel. 5. In addition to Saipan, the Air Force plans to send aircraft on regular deployments to bases ranging from Australia to India as part of its bulked-up force in the Pacific. These plans include regular deployments to Royal Australian Air Force bases at Darwin and Tyndall, Changi East Air Base in Singapore, Korat Air Base in Thailand, Trivandrum in India. Other possible bases include, Kubai Point and Porto Princesa in the Philippines, and airfields in Indonesia and Malaysia. Here is list of steps taken by India. 1. From roads to military equipments, India is upgrading its defences along Indo-China border. The Indian Army's operational capability along the China border will be getting a major flip, as two tank brigades are soon to be deployed in that region. According to latest reports, Defence Ministry has cleared the plan to raise six new armoured regiments, that will be equipped with roughly 350 tanks. In addition, three mechanized infantry battalions will be raised, with 180 BMP-2 infantry combat vehicles. 2. Defense Ministry has also approved the induction of a third regiment of BrahMos for deployment in northeastern sector along the China border. The BrahMos is a ramjet supersonic cruise missile having a range of 290 kilometers. Each regiment of BrahMos consists of around 65 missiles five mobile autonomous launchers and supporting equipment. 3. India and the United States have agreed in principle to share military logistics. Washington and New Delhi have largely agreed to the terms of a new agreement that allows the two militaries to use each other's land, air and naval bases for resupplies, repair and rest. 4. India is ramping up its submarine fleet. India plans to induct about 20 new submarines in the next few years. Some of these submarines will be armed with indigenous K-4 missile for nuclear strike. To know more, see above cards. 5. India is participating in Exercise Malabar, a trilateral naval exercise involving the United States and Japan. Originally a bilateral exercise between India and the US, Japan became a permanent partner in 2000. Despite the statement by a top US Navy officer that Malabar was not directly aimed at China, there is very little doubt about who is the target. The exercise is conducted only about 400 kilometers from the contested Senkaku Islands. 
scenarios include hunting for Chinese submarines, ships and countering hostile Chinese Navy. 6. India is providing active help to Vietnam, which is hotly contesting the South China Sea dispute against China. India has agreed on supplying ships to Vietnam. The sale of at least four patrol vessels comes as part of the $100 million credit line for military equipments extended to Vietnam by India. Vietnam needs at least seven more such ships, and Indian PSU, GRSE is expected to get the order for the rest of the ships as well. Talks are an advanced stage with Vietnam for export of Brahmos. Brahmos, considered to be the most deadly anti-ship missile, will be very helpful for Vietnam in countering the Chinese Navy in the event of a conflict. 7. Like Vietnam, India is providing support to the Philippines, which is also party to the South China Sea dispute against China. India has agreed to export two light frigates, about 3,500 tons each at a total cost of 2,000 crore rupees to them. 8. India has activated a new data reception and tracking station in Vietnam. It has been linked with another station in Indonesia.